So we're trying a little experiment here. I always want to do things that I learn from and not try to do things the same way every time, all the time. So we're trying something. So this is a fairly new pasture. You can see there's lots of brambles and weeds in there. There's some grass in there, um, but there's also a bunch of crap out here. These thistles showed up after Hurricane Michael. We never had any of that stuff until Hurricane Michael. And so this property was cleaned up. Now we're, it's got a big hill right out here and then it falls off about 40 feet of elevation drop on the other side down to a cypress pond. We limed this last spring. The pH was a little bit low for uh, pasture grass. So we applied lime. Well, last year we got, I don't know, almost 30 inches of rain above our normal rainfall. And so when that happened, the hill up here, this broom sedge stayed really healthy <laughs> because all the lime washed down the hill. And so, hey baby. So we ended up down in the bottom down there, there's almost no broom sedge. We got the pH perfect down there. And so we still came in here and we planted bahia grass with the no-till. And then in the fall, we planted oats and clover. Now the oats did okay. The clover did very poor. Again, we knew it wasn't gonna do great uh, simply because we knew the pH was low and you need pH that's closer to seven um, with clover. So. So the experiment that we're trying, okay. So I came in here and set the mower down real low and I mowed a big swath of this broom sedge. You don't see broom sedge in hay fields a lot of times because broom sedge is a bunch of grass. We call it a sedge, but it's actually a bunch of grass. And so it can't handle being disrupted very much. So I mowed this section right here before we let the cows graze it, all right? And you can see that they're in it nibbling on, I mean, it's it's been three days, so there's not been enough regrowth here for real grass coming in but but they're in they're in here grazing it that's fine now what we're going to do is let them graze down the oats that are in here some of those oats have gone to seed during that soft dough stage and so we're going to let them graze that down we're going to let them nibble on the clover that's there and then we're going to come in and mark this line. We'll put a flag on either end of it, right here. Put a flag down there and we'll put one back behind me. We're gonna mark this line and then we're gonna mow all this down. And we're just gonna see what happens as far as the recovery of the grass. Is it better to let the cows graze what they can graze out of it and then mow the broom sedge? Or is it better to go ahead mow the broom sedge down, let springtime happen like springtime happens and see what the grass does. I don't know, we've never tried it, so I just don't know. Um, but we are gonna give it a shot and we're gonna see what happens. Um, hey ears, you're so pretty, you're so pretty. <clears throat> so we had some really rough, rough weather last night. Um, the last two nights we have had storms that have come through here and I mean we've gotten five inches of rain um, literally it rained yesterday last night I should say it rained an inch in about 10 minutes I mean, it was just unbelievable the amount of rain that came down and so Anyway, these these girls and 
and heifers are there. They're kind of in shell shock. They're like, what did we do? That right there looks mysterious. A hole in the ground like that could mean one thing, and that's called yellow jackets. Mm. I wish I had a flag I'd mark that. Yellow jackets can be a nightmare when you own a tractor. Especially a tractor that don't have a cap. All right, so one of the other things that we did on this because there was not a tremendous stand. I mean, you can see some of the oats are, let's see if I can find them right in there. See those, those seed heads right there. That's some of the oats. It just didn't, of course the cows have already eaten the leafy part away. But we didn't get a great stand of oats in here. <clears throat> And so we decided rather than strip grazing this, we were just going to turn them in, let them do their thing, let them graze, and uh, and then and then mow down the broom sedge and see what it does for our summer grasses. We we double planted this area with bahia grass. So what I mean is we planted north and south with the drill. And then we turned around and planted east and west. Um, and so we, we wanted bahia grass really thick in here. Um, and, and last year, of course, last year was the first summer. We had a fantastic stand of bahia grass. Um, especially on the other side of this hill right here because we had the lime and and all just right we got the ph right on the on the downside of this hill <clears throat> but there was a big big thicket of these wild cherry trees you see those we cleared that Those things, I'm just showing you, there's just, I mean, just massive numbers of those things. We have mowed them. Um, I mean, this was a big thicket of them. We came in here with the, with the grapple and we, we lightly disc up this ground and we came in here with the grapple and piled all those things up and we burned them. And so, We've mowed this two or three times. This is the first time we've really grazed it. First, first encounter with cows on it for any period of time. Now we did come in here last year toward the end of the summer. The bahia grass was planted in March. Um, we would come in like in August and just mob the cows on it. Just, you know, we'd give them one day. And then we'd pull the cows off and then give it two or three, three or four days, four or five days of rest. And then we'd bring them right back in one day, mob it down and then get them off. And, um, you know, try to give it some rest in between. And this grazing that they're on right now, this is the first time that we've really put cows on it and let them stay on it. <clears throat> you still see a lot of this broom sedge out here. But when we get to the other side of this little hill, you can, you can really begin to see where it just kind of stops. And that's because all of our lime, with all that rain last year, it settled down in the bottom of that pasture, down at the bottom of the hill. And so, I don't know how much of that is visible on the iPhone, but you see down below down there, there's a definitive line where the, where the broom sedge stops and the 
green grass starts. Now down there, we had a good stand of clover. We had a good stand of oats. We had some vetch down there. And of course the bahia grass was really good down there. But this pasture right over here is where the girls are coming next. And uh, this pasture, we cleared this, we planted this um, in the spring. We turned around and planted it again in the fall. And then we grazed, strip grazed, bahia grass bales. Um, rolled the bales out and um, probably 25 or 30 bales out here. You can still see some of them. Now, once we got finished with that, we interceded red clover and oats. And you can just see how well that red clover did. I mean, it just, it got up underneath that hay. We had just a, a super bed of hay up here. So like I say, we rolled out probably 25 bales of hay. And, uh, 25 or 30. And so the oats have gone to seed, the, the red clover has gone to seed and just looks really, really good. There's some weeds in there, but there's almost no broom sedge in there. All right. And the cows are gonna come in here. Now we will strip graze this. We won't just turn them in and let them have it. We'll put up lines um, every second T post. So this is our corner. We'll put up a line. Let's see, that's the first T post. The second T post is somewhere right there. We'll run down this field to the south. There's a corresponding T post on the other on the other end. And so we'll give them this little section right here. Give them a day there, and then we'll move them over. Give them a day. We'll move them over. Give them a day, and then move them over one more time. And that that far end down there is shaped weird. Um, the fence runs back at an angle down into this swamp. So they'll have two or three days there. Um, it gets so narrow down there, it's hard to put a water trough at one end without cows pushing the lines down. And so anyway, we just give them that last little triangular wedge down there. It's just an odd shape deal. And uh, so we, we end up with seven or eight days eight or nine days of grazing in this little pasture. Um, so that's gonna be real, real good pasture this year. You know, and when you've got seven or eight days in a place like this, that means that you've got seven or eight days of rest somewhere else. And so while you're grazing one spot, you're resting another. Now they won't come here after that seven or eight days they'll go on down the they'll go on down the other side of the cypress pond and they'll graze down there and so you let's say you got nine days of rest here and they go up there and graze you know five or six more days let's say six days that gives you 15 days of rest here you jump over on the other side of the farm and they'll do five days five days and then five more days, that's 15 days. So you end up with 30, around 30 days of rest on one of these pastures. If we get any kind of rainfall at all, I mean, you can, this grass will just be going crazy. And that's what we want. I mean, that's, that's our goal. And of course, then when you're up here strip grazing, <laughs> everything else is resting. So rest is the key to it. Um, yeah, you got to make sure your pH is right. You got to make sure you got plenty of seed on the ground for the seed to germinate and grow. Um, you need that animal impact, but you don't need animal impact to the point that they've turned it into the surface of the moon, you know. And so rest is very, very, very important. <clears throat> now, on this side of this pasture, you notice that it's been mowed. I mowed it last week. This is going to be a hay pasture. There's about a 
11 or 12 acres of, of bahia grass. There again, we double planted the bahia. We planted in one direction, turned the drill around and planted it perpendicular. So we've got, you know, double planted, double the seed rate bahia. <clears throat> you see that strip right there. Stephen Roach came in here with his windrow machine and windrowed this after we cleared it. And so it's it's smooth. I mean, it's it's really really nice. Um, there's a few little potholes here and there out there, but for the most part, it's really smooth. The bahia grass out there is super super thick. Uh, now it was planted midsummer last year, and so it has not had cows on it. There's there's we've got two sides of it that doesn't have fence, but this will be our hay field this year. We'll fence it this fall. We'll overseed it in the fall with our winter grazing. And then we'll, this will be a winter pasture for next year. And so it's gonna be, it's gonna be really good. I think it's gonna do really, really well for us. <clears throat> there were 16 acres of these big giant pine trees and you can see how tall they are. Well, when we cleared this, 27, I'll say that number again, 27 of those pine trees actually survived Hurricane Michael. And since then, we left them standing. We thought, hey, you know what? We're going, they don't create a whole bunch of shade, but they're, they're very much old Florida. So we're going to leave them. Well, since, that happened we've had that one hit by a lightning a tornado got that one a tornado got now nah, you can't see it but anyway it's on the other side over there tornado got these two we had another one hit by a lightning and so i really 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 wish i had just cut them all down um because there's i mean there's no commercial viability to it i mean nobody's gonna come and harvest you know five trees in one pasture and 15 in another it's just nobody's gonna do that but um i wish i just sawed them down and 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 cut them up got them out of the way because um, we saved them thinking that it was going to be something pretty and and it is pretty you know until you watch one get hit by lightning and and then fall on your fence because that's happened every time they fall they fall on this middle fence for some reason and so anyway that is what it is. Well, hey, this is Ryan Ziegler with the Lazy Acres Family Farm. If you enjoy our videos, I would encourage you to like it. If you really, really like our videos, go ahead and click that subscribe button. And then if you really, really, really like our videos, ring that bell and you'll be notified every time we upload a new video. Share us on your social media, that'll help us out. Our YouTube channel is growing, but we would love for it to, to grow and grow and grow. So give us some shares there and we'll sure appreciate it. Hey, this is Ryan. Y'all have a big old good day.